what I'm about to explain to you might change the way that you look at charts forever, whether you're new or not. So listen closely to me and try your best to follow along. And hopefully by the end of this, you'll understand exactly what I'm trying to say to you. Let's pretend like you are property shopping. You're looking for a new home. As you go and you look from property to property, imagine you're walking up to the door of the first home that you're going to check out. That door opens for you, and this is the first time you're getting to see inside. What do you think the first thing that's going to happen is? Well, immediately you develop on first look a first impression. As you look around, as soon as that door swings open, and visualize this with me, as you look around as that door swings open, the first thing you're starting to think is, do I like the way that this looks or not? The way that things are laid out, can I see myself interacting with this in the near future? Can I see myself taking on this property and, and really making it my own and doing anything with it? Or is my first impression when that door swings open and I get the first look at it, ew, no thanks. I don't like the way this looks, the way it's laid out. I, it's not for me. So let's pass on this one and just go to the, to the next one. So that's the first thing. Secondly, let's just say that the answer to question one was yes. You do like the way it's laid out. It does look inviting. You can see yourself interacting with this. It looks good. So two would be okay. Well, let's take a look at it, right? Now you want to you wanna explore. Let's just pretend like these homes that you're looking at, though, they're older. Old construction, maybe from the 17 or 1800s, historic property. And so you're a little skeptical to even walk around this thing. You want to make sure nothing's going to go crazy, nothing's going to fall on you, uh, that the floors aren't just going to crash through and you're going to go plummeting because just the way that things look like it definitely needs some work, some refinishing, whatever. The first thing you're going to consider in this property you don't trust yet is, all right, so now I want to go ahead and, and do a walkthrough, but subconsciously, the first thing you're going to do is look at the floors. As you take your first step in, you want to know, are these floors safe? Is this actually the floor? Is this going to hold for me as I start making steps inside this property? Or am I going to take a step or two inside and end up just falling? Now, at the same time, you'll also be thinking, well, my next question after that would be, well, where are the ceilings at? I don't want to hit my head. Just a few things that just naturally come into your head. Your spatial awareness kicks in subconsciously, and that's what you start to think of. Is it safe, and can I maneuver through this comfortably? Now, bear with me still. How do you adjust the first part of that concern? I'm talking about the floors. Well, how would you feel comfortable to trust that it's going to hold for you? If you're the first one walking in, let's just say the real estate agent says, go ahead in. Are you going to feel comfortable taking the first few steps in there? If the wood looks potentially broken, you just have no idea if the floors are going to hold for you? Probably not. You're the first steps in. Who knows? On step one, two, or three, you could plumb it down to whatever the next floor is because there is no kind of established reason that you can think of that this floor is going to hold. You have no proof, so you have no reason to trust it. It's just a level. But if the other people that are with you, maybe that real estate agent, takes a step in first, you're able to then plot out based off where they go and the result of that, where support could be. So the first thing you, you're going to notice when they could take a step in before you is, okay, well, these people that went before me, it held for them. So all of a sudden you feel confident and you say, well, if I take a step in just like they did, it'll probably hold for me because now there's proof. Someone did it before me. Now I have an established feeling of support here. I can trust it a little bit. But then two, where will you find support? Where can you trust to, to take your steps? Well, the most obvious answer would be at the same places that the people that went before me. So if they took a step in this spot and it held, and in this spot and it held, in this spot, if I just follow in their footprints and step in the same spots, I can expect those same levels to hold for me too. Because it's proven that if I take steps there, based off what they did before me, that there will be some holding. There are strength in those areas. But then on top of that, how much can I trust those areas? Well, like I said, if nobody went before you, you don't even know where to step. 
there's no levels. There's no support areas. If someone goes before you, now you have support areas that have been tested one time. If there are other people with you and they go into that property before you and they take those same steps and it holds for them, well, obviously, the more people that go before you and take those same steps, the more confirmation you have that each time these steps were taken, these spots were hit, that it held for them and it did, it did not fall through. It gave them the support that they needed. Each reinforcement of that thought is going to make you feel more confident in taking those same exact steps at those same exact spots. Now, instead of just one or two people going, you've had five touches of those spots. And you know, being the sixth person, it's just extremely likely at this point that those spots are going to hold. We've had it tested five, six times. That's how you draw out support on a chart. Let me tell you and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So remember what I first said at the beginning, which is the first thing that you do is you see that door open and you look at it and you say, well, first and foremost, do I even like what I'm seeing right now? Because if you don't like what you're seeing, you don't even need to consider finding your, your support your, where you're going to step as you go into this property because you don't like it in the first place. You're just going to say, close that door. Forget about that. That looks hideous. I'm not interested. It's not for me. Let's just go to the next one. That's what you do when you first look at a chart and you look at the price action. Now, the price action just basically means if you're trading properly and you're using a candle chart, and if you're not, we can get into that in another video. Uh, just I'll probably have a link to one in the description or something. But you look at the ups, you look at the downs, you look at the volume, you look at the way things look. And overall, based off what you know as technical analysis, you can just at a glance tell if this is even a chart you want to be trading. If the price is way too high and doesn't look like you want to enter it, you'll probably say, no, looks bad. If there's just the volume seems low and it looks like people aren't trading it, you might say, no, looks bad. I don't even want to mess with this. No need to plot this out. I'm just going to go to the next uh, price, to the next stock or the next cryptocurrency or whatever you're trading. Um, and so that's how that works. Or if the price looks really, really weak, like it's not even going to go up and you're trying to buy low and sell high and it doesn't look like it's going to go high, you might say, no, pass on that. And you just close the door on that property and you have no interest in moving forward. You just go to the next one. Happens all the time. All right, maybe AMC is not for me, and I'll just go to GameStop, and I'll check out that chart. Mm, not for me. Let's go to the next property. Are you following me so far? Okay, but once you say, okay, well, actually, I pulled up this chart here, and it looks good. This is something I want to trade. Or maybe you just already know going in, regardless of how the chart looks, you want to find an entry. You want to, you want to interact with this property. Now what you want to do is start taking a look around. Because before you purchase it, before you invest, you want to make sure that you know what you're doing and what you're getting into. So first thing first, you want to make sure it's safe to walk around in. What are you going to do? You're going to start mapping out support levels, just like I said. And the easiest way to do that is to see where people have stepped before you and it's held. And that's where you can start to establish your support lines. So hopefully you're following what I'm saying so far. Now. Looking at this from a short term perspective, as you can see, I'm just on the one minute time frame looking at what's happened so far today. Where do I see there have been a lot of touches so far on the bottom side? So I didn't get to the resistance part yet, but obviously this video is about support and resistance. So you have your supports, the bottoms and your resistance, the highs. If you're not familiar with resistance, just think of it simply this way. Let's just say now you've understood, take steps where other people have stepped, obvious levels of support established. Let's just say suddenly there's some competition on whoever can punch the ceiling as hard as they can and it not break, you'll win $1,000. As the first person going, as you punch up to that ceiling full force, you don't know if it's gonna hold for you or not. You have no proof of how strong or weak that ceiling is. But as people go in front of you and they punch it first and they don't break through, you see the strong guy in front of you and he punches it first and it doesn't go through. And then this weak guy tries to, he punches it, it doesn't go through. Now you're the first person. You say, all right, well, I'm just medium strength. The strong guy already went in front of me. It didn't break for him and it didn't break for the other three people as well. That means when I punch it, 
it's probably going to hold. That level, that ceiling is not going to break if I punch it at that point. And I have multiple indications of that based off the people that hit that level before me and their fish just bounced off. So now you're starting to understand as you're taking a look at a, at a stock or cryptocurrency for the first time, establishing the floor based off of how many touches it's had on the bottom side and held and didn't continue to go through, no one fell. And then on the ceiling side, the resistance, how many hits going up has it gotten without people being able to break through the top at the same spot, the same ceiling, F floors at the same level, ceil ceilings at the same level. Now you're starting hopefully to understand this with me. Let's just bump this up to three minutes so we can summarize the information a little bit better here and look for key obvious levels of support, obvious levels of resistance. So a floor and a ceiling. Well, the main floor you might start seeing is right about here in this general area. Now, on a chart, it is not incredibly important whether if you're using a line chart, it's a little more important because you don't have candlesticks which vary like this. As you can see in these candlesticks, there's wicks, there's bodies. A lot of people are like, well, should I draw my lines on the bodies or on the wicks? It doesn't matter. All you're trying to accomplish is at this general area, you're trying to figure out at this general area, will the price hold or not? And at this general area at the top, will the price break through that or not? And just trying to establish reasons for belief based off what you see. It does not need to be a perfect line. So here you see this was the bottom. As the price came down, it hit right here to about $56. And then it held as a potential first proof of support. Because don't forget, this was right at market open. So there were no supports established yet until we came all the way down here and made a significant bounce. Now we can see this was the bottom. This was where somebody, a group of people, they took a step and they got caught here. All right, so that's our first touch, right at about 56. Then there was a bounce, didn't hold, went through. So now this is another absolute low where it then made a, a reversal. So this is another potential level of support. But as you can see here, were there any more touches in this general area right here after that? Well, as you zoom out a little, and this is today, so the day's not quite over yet. As you zoom out a little, you see the price has not come back down to 55, six yet. So yes, this is a potential level of support, but it's not reinforced because there was no other touch after that. So I can't really say at this point in time that this is a strong level of support. I can just say it is a potential level of support because we've had a, a reversal off of that price. So again, one touch was here at 55 or 56. Was there another touch near 56? Well, coming back here, if, if you just trace this line across right here, you can see there was another touch right about here in this general area. A lot of consolidation, which just basically means the price really stops going really high or really low and it just trades tightly in a little area right here. See the little ups and downs, ups and downs without really moving. The consolidation was right here in this general area, right around 56 to 56.10, you know, 10 cent in a little area right here. So now we have confirmation of one or two more touches. So that means not just the first person went in here and it held, but then a second person, a third person, a couple children in between there. So far, it's looking pretty strong. Now you have a stronger level of support because you have more confirmation that it's held because more people have taken that same path and it held for them. And then again, moves up, comes right back down to that general area, and that's where it holds again for the next group. And then it moves back up. Now you have three overall touches of support. Now you have a strong level. So that means if the price were to go up and, and then come back down again, where can you probably expect it to stop and hold? What's the most probable price that the price is going to stop and hold? Well, it's obviously going to be your now established strong level of support right in this general area. Now, again, sometimes you get cleaner levels where the stops are much more precise. Sometimes you don't. And they're just, you know, you have a wick here, but then you have a wick going down here. And then body, some bodies are touching, some wicks are touching the area. And then here it went through a little bit. And then here it went through a little bit with the wick. But overall, you see right around this $56 mark, that is your level of support. And I hit indicators. So let's get those back up. And now we'll just draw that horizontal line. Right about there. There you go. So now you have your general area of support drawn out. Now, resistance. 
It's the same concept, but on the top side now. Your floor is your support, your ceiling is your resistance. So where was the highs? Where was the absolute highs where it touched and it bounced back down? And then it touched and it bounced back down. Well, on the absolute high side, it seems like it was somewhere right around here. Now I'm gonna draw that line and you'll be able to see what I'm saying here. Let's just make this the, uh, the green line. Let's just change the colors up. Why do I say this? As you can see here, Yes, there were some wicks of the candles that went through it, but overall, this was the stopping area right here. You can see the wicks tried, rejected, tried, rejected. The body of the candle stopped right there at the line. Tried, rejected, body, tried, rejected, tried, rejected, right at that spot. The most common thing that these candles had in common right here was this 57.2 mark. Then it tried again, candle, tried, rejected, then right there, perfect touch at the wick, right at 5.72, 57.2, fell back down. So now you have two touches at this level, or really quite a few, but two touches overall in two groups. So now you have a resistance level. Now I have my absolute strong uh, support and my absolute strong resistance. In between there, I can start mapping out like many levels, you could say. So the most important ones are usually going to be your absolute low and your absolute high. But in between there, there's still going to be levels where people took steps and it held. So for example, the first one that I see in between, that's a weaker level, would be kind of right around 56.4. See here, the touches here of the bodies. Yeah, there were rejection wicks down here, but the bodies held here. You see rejection wicks here, rejection wick here, another consolidation area here where there were rejection wicks, and then here where there was another little mini reversal. So in between the absolute low and absolute high, the swing lows and the swing highs, as they're called, here's another little level in between. And we'll just make these uh, light blue. So there's another level to make note of. What's another one? Well, that's a more of a supportish level. It's towards the bottom side of everything. A little mini resistance level seems to kind of have been right here. All right, so you can see some bodies touching here, some rejection wicks touching here. You can see rejection wicks here. A little bit of a move here, um, but then rejection wicks here, rejection wicks here, and now it's trying to hold support here. So you can see this is an another potential level in between. Now, like I said, really the most important levels are your absolute bottom and your absolute top. Those are the first two levels you should always be trying to find. They mean the most. And if you're trying to trade something properly, obviously buying as close to the bottom as you can, the confirmed bottom, and selling as close to the confirmed top is gonna to always give you the most amount of profit, but sometimes you wanna know, well, what are my levels where it could potentially catch or it could potentially reverse and start going down that? And that would be your inner support and resistance lines, or your inner levels. Key levels, inner levels. That's the way to look at this. Now, that's how you plot out a chart, and hopefully you found that useful so far. That's how you plot out a chart on the short-term time frame. But when you really take a look at the big picture, that's how you can get the most valuable support and resistance lines because you're not just taking into consideration the lows and the highs of one day. You're taking into the consideration the lows and the highs of multiple days or the lows and the highs of months or years. And the longer term time frame that you're looking at, the more weight that those levels hold. Because you could say, well, last year we were heading down from $1,000 all the way down and we caught at 500. So that means now we're coming right back down to that same absolute low level of 500 that we hit last year. Let me just tell you what I'm talking about here. So let's now zoom out from this daily time frame and let's take a look at a couple days here. And let's just hide drawings. Now you're looking at price action which is just the ups and downs and the way that the price is presenting itself to you when you first open that door and you're first looking at this property for the first time, now you're looking at this from a major step back. Instead of looking at where we just were right here, looking at one day, we're looking at the entire month from here to here. And going back here, this is going back into May as well. And right here, this is June, just to, to put that in perspective for you. From here, if you end up plotting out levels, you're now plotting out more important levels. More information is summarized. As you can see here, all those different, those four little levels we plotted out, they're in that little spot. Big picture now, I can see what are even more substantial 
lows and even more substantial highs based off what just happened, not today, but the entire month or maybe even take another step back to the entire year. And those levels are really going to be the important ones that will most likely hold. So especially the absolute lows and the absolute highs. So the first things I see here when I'm trying to plot out is, well, what's my absolute bottom at this point? Well, you can see the absolute bottom where there were multiple touches seems to be right about here. Are you seeing that with me? Right at around $42 and some change. You can see the body the or the wick, the wick and the body, uh, two right here, two bodies right there and the wicks as well. If the wicks go through, it's perfectly fine. You're just trying to find the most touches at, at, at pretty much the bottom. So right about here. And then if I just drag that over, I see the wick was right here and that's about where it stopped. Then it's right at the bottom of this wick, right at the bottom of that wick and that wick and that wick. So it looks like right at about, you know, 42 bucks. That is at the absolute bottom level. Yes, there were a few rejections a little further, um, but really, if you if you go below the major support level and you just start looking at little one little wick, these little levels right here, they're not that important because they only have one touch. You want the most amount of touches. So right here, this is my key level of support, my absolute low level of support here, and this kind of and just from here forward. Then on the top side, well, right around here looks to be the area to look at. I have the bodies right here touching the top, and then I have some of the wicks right here pretty much stopping at the top there. As you can see, right in this area, around 63 bucks, give or take, a couple, couple cents, doesn't really matter. I know that this is the general stopping area with probably a high potential high up to about $65 right at the top of that wick. So right in this area is where I can expect things, if the price starts going up, to potentially reverse and start going back down. So that's now my ceiling my resistance level that I have mapped. I have my absolute low, my floor, my support, and my top, my ceiling, my resistance. In between there, I can start mapping out levels in the middle of that. So now I could draw a level right here on AMC at about $52. I can see touch here, you know, some touches here as well, but then, you know, touch here, resistance here, resistance here, this was the top, resistance here, consolidation in the general area as well, which was actually proving as resistance because it got stopped when it was trying to go up. And then here, support, bottom, support, bottom, support, bottom. So right here, shorter, shorter term. So like from here forward, this seems to, and really from here forward, this seems to be my closest strong level of absolute support on the bottom. So now I have 42 and shorter term, 52. If I go even shorter term, I can look and, and make another level somewhere probably right in here. I see resistance, resistance, support, 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 somewhere right in this general area, support, maybe not so much here, but here. And that's right around 55 ish, 56, give or take. So now I have this level plotted out, this level plotted out, this level plotted out, and then the ceiling plotted out. And I know that the absolute high, the all time high, Though it's not a, like a strong level because there weren't multiple touches up there yet, I just make note, this is probably the absolute, absolute top at this point, and this is the absolute, absolute bottom at this point, looking at from here forward. So hopefully you were able to follow that with me, and if not, let me know down in the comments below, but I will go ahead and now unhide drawings, and you can see how I've kind of already uh, mapped this out. Now, I didn't put this level here because shorter term, it didn't really matter because we'd have to fall below this line before we even get here. And it's always good to not, here's my recommendation. Now you know how to plot out support and resistance lines, but don't have a lot of lines on your chart at one given time. Only map out the levels that mean the most. Usually a good trader will not have a whole bunch of lines drawn out and a whole bunch of indicators on their screen. They'll use one or two indicators you know, on top of using volume. And then they'll have the key level of support and the key level of resistance and maybe one other line or so. But the cleaner you keep your chart, the better you can read it. Because what's really important are the candles at the end of the day. And you're just drawing your line on the bottom and top to keep in mind 
as like a sticky note of what the absolute bottom price was and what the absolute top price was. And then like maybe one or two expected levels in between. But you shouldn't be just drawing like level here and then level here and then level here and then level here and level here. Yes, those are potential levels, but they're not as important. So just keep your chart cleaner and keep what's really important in focus. So hope you guys found that helpful. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comment section below. If you need more clarification, also let me know. And then also uh, give me some feedback and recommendations on you, what you would like me to break down and explain next for you when it comes to trading. I've been trading for a couple years and I will answer any questions. So feel free to ask away. Again, click subscribe if you found this helpful. And I really appreciate that. And that will allow us to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.